Have you ever thought about what it's like to be an oceanographer in a place like Antarctica? Well, let me tell you my story. The first time I went to Antarctica, it was truly one of the most amazing experiences in my life. It was about four years ago. I boarded a military plane in Christchurch, New Zealand, and six hours later, I landed on the ice. We looked around, and everything around us was white. We don't have harsh winters where I'm from, like we do here in New Jersey. So seeing snow is always a treat for us. An annual weekend trip to the biggest and only mountain with snow in the country had us excited all year round. Since that time, I've gone back to Antarctica two more years. But this time to the other side, the West Antarctic Peninsula. We leave from Chile and cross the Drake Passage on board the Antarctic Research and Supply Vessel Lawrence M. Gould. A week later, we arrive at Palmer Station, one of the three American research stations down in Antarctica. Last year, I stayed in the station for four months. Living down there is pretty nice. Imagine not having to drive to school. There's an awesome cook that makes delicious food. We can go on boat rides to see icebergs and whales, and we can even hike up the glacier. There is a lot of wildlife down there. We can only see three species of penguins. Adelie penguins, chinstrap penguins, and gentoo penguins. There are several species of seals. Crab eater seals, elephant seals, leopard seals, and the most commonly seen whales are humpback and minke whales. Sometimes, although not that often, we can see killer whales. I study phytoplankton, the tiny plants in the ocean that produce part of the oxygen we breathe. Phytoplankton eat light, a source of energy, CO2 that's in the air, and nutrients, their food, in order to grow. To study them, we need to collect water to evaluate how much phytoplankton there is and how much food they have to eat. At the same time, we need to know how much light they have and the properties of the water they live in. We do this both from big ships and small boats. We deploy a CTD, an instrument that measures temperature, how much salt there is in the water, and depth. We also deploy a spear to measure the light in the water column, and finally we collect water at different depths using a GoFlow bottle. We come back to station and filter the water we collected. The color of the filter at the end tells us how much phytoplankton there was in the water. We also deploy gliders that allow us to sample continuously, night and day, for longer periods of time. They measure how cold the water is, how salty, and how much particles there is in the water. And why do we care about phytoplankton, something that we can't even see? Well, the ocean supports a great diversity of life and ecosystems. Phytoplankton are what we call primary producers, meaning they produce the oxygen we breathe. They are in the bottom of the food chain and are the main source of food for krill, an animal that resembles a small shrimp, which in turn feeds most of the penguin and whale population in Antarctica. The oceans are warming due to climate change. The West Antarctic Peninsula is the fastest winter warming place on Earth. So there is an urge to understand how the system works and how slight changes in the physics of the water will affect this ecosystem. Being an oceanographer or a marine biologist is not always about swimming with dolphins and penguins. Actually, most of us have never been in the water with either. There is a lot of computer work involved in preparation for the field season. A lot of hard work day and night with the boat rolling but we get to do really cool research in awesome places like Antarctica. My question is, who doesn't want to be an oceanographer in Antarctica?